Much peace, prosperity, light, knowledge, wisdom, overstanding, abundance, love, God energy, supreme energy being surrounding you, protecting you, covering you. You are wellness. You are love. You are light. You are protected. Ashe. Peace and light family, I hope that you are well. I just wanted to really quickly go through a quick video answering some questions about my spiritual journey. I often get asked like, where did I start my spiritual journey? When did I start? How did I start? Um, so I just wanna answer some of those quick questions. And you know, maybe like in between, just give a little bit of advice on things you can do if you feel like you're ready to start a spiritual journey and what that could look like and feel like for you. Um, but just going through really quickly. so. Growing up for me, my, I come from a very like spiritual family. Um, I come from a very old school Southern black family. Um, my mother's side of the family is from the deep South. My father's side of the family is from Panama. More specifically, my mother's side of the family is from Augusta, Georgia, um, but really coming from like that Charleston, South Carolina area, um, moving to Alpine, Georgia, more country, rural parts of Georgia, and then going to what some people consider a small city, but very country, Augusta, Georgia. Um, and I love Augusta, Georgia. I lived there for um, a while, and a while for me. Um, I moved a lot growing up, so a while for me is like a, anything longer than a year years a while for me. Um, I lived there for a while. When I was a teenager, I graduated high school in Augusta, Georgia. I spent my senior year in Augusta, Georgia. Um, shout out to Academy of Richmond County, ARC, Adam Musketeers, baby. <laughs> um, but I love Augusta. It is a huge part of my roots and my foundation especially the foundation of my spirituality, um, as well as my father's side, the Panamanian side of the family. Um, but most of my spiritual practices come from my mother's side because I was raised by my mother and her side of the family. So that's what really greatly impacted me. My mother's father, my grandfather, he's my only living grandparent that I have and the only living grandparent that I ever met. All of my other grandparents passed away either before I was born or when I was a baby. Um, so my grandfather was the only person that I knew growing up um, who was like an elder elder in my life. And my grandfather is very spiritual in his own way. Um, he is definitely still a man, you know, uh, but he always deep down inside had like a lot of spiritual wisdom that he would pass on. Until this day, he does. Um, I am the grandchild that my grandfather spent. I'm the person that my grandfather spends the most time on the phone with. When we talk, we talk for hours. And he gives me spiritual advice and, you know, old wisdom and proverbs. Um, and not only that, but he also gives me like a lot of natural remedies. My grandfather is 86 years old now. And he doesn't take any medicine, you know, very healthy man. You know, when he talks, he full clarity, you know, no issues. My grandfather is great. He's in a great shape of health. Shape of health. And we always knew that he was going to be healthy because my grandfather always had those natural remedies on deck. You know, he was very much like the, you know, take a shot of gin every day, that cod liver oil, you know, old school country remedies. You know, the cod liver oil is, a, is a, I think that's a Southern thing that a lot of country people do. Uh, but my grandfather sometimes would go a little more in depth and he would tell you to mix certain things together. And, you know, like if you got a cold, if you got this, I'm currently getting over the flu. And I told him and he was like, okay, you need to take this ginger, boil it with this lemon, put, put this pineapple, put a shot of gin. You got to put this cinnamon, put the, da, 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 you know, you mix it together, you boil it, da, 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 and then you drink it down and you got to drink two cups a day. And that, that, like, you know, he, he is that po that man with the potions and the tonics, you know what I'm saying? And that's the grandfather that I grew up with. Um, and those traditions from my grandfather, as well as my grandmother was passed down to excuse me, to my mother who passed them down to me. Um, and a big tradition that they passed down was ancestor veneration. I grew up in a household where we venerated our ancestors in our own way. My mother always kept the ancestor altar up in our household. Um, she always, she had a jar of pennies from my grandmother who passed away. My grandmother used to save pennies in a jar and my mother kept them. 
So she had a jar of pennies. She had my grandmother's picture. She had my grandmother's from my father's side picture. Um, and other people in our family who passed away, my cousins and uncles, some people who passed away in our family. And she would put them all up on the altar. She would have a candle. She would put the jar of pennies. She would put um, some money of her own. She would put incense. She would put uh, flowers. She would put certain things, offerings, food, certain things on the altar as a veneration to our ancestors. And she would make sure to let me know like we put this here to venerate our ancestors to let them know that we love them we got to feed them like we feed ourselves yada, yada yada and she always kept that since I was very young and it was something that I never really like thought was abnormal honestly I thought it was something that everybody did because if you're in New York like you go to the bodega you're gonna see an altar in the boat and a lot of bodegas a lot of stores a lot of botanicas some nail shops you know things like that you'll see like a, 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 a altar in there um so i didn't think it was like an abnormal thing until i was moved down so when i moved down south to augusta with my mother and i had a friend come over and she walked in the house and she was like what is that and i was like she looked at the ancestor altar and she was like what is that and i was like oh that's like that's an ancestor altar and she was like what and i explained to her like what everything was and she just thought it was the weirdest thing um and i realized that oh that was the moment i realized like okay so this is not like a norm for a lot of people um and then i started asking people like you know y'all don't do ancestor veneration yada yada she was like no and a lot of people was telling me like no we don't do that they didn't even really know what it was um so i'm very grateful that without me even realizing it i was raised with this strong sense of spirituality and value of our ancestors and <coughs> raised to know that we listen to our ancestors and you know um, my mother would always tell me, you know, stop and listen, follow your first mind, listen to what your spirit tell you to do, um, things like that. You know, uh, she, I had a spirit, a very strong spiritual gift since I was very, very young, um, very young. I had a strong spiritual gift and it was no way of hiding from it. I probably, I may do another video about that, but it was no way of hiding from it. And I remember telling my mother about it and she was like, I know, I know. She was like, cause when you was younger, you know, this happened and you did this, you did this thing. And I knew that you, that you had this gift, you know, and she never made me feel ashamed. and never made me feel crazy about it. You know, she definitely like embraced it. And if anything told me like, you got to learn how to control it and know how to use it. You know what I'm saying? Saying, and she would give me advice that her mother used to give her and you know to let let me know like you know that follow your first mind follow your spirit listen to what your spirit tell you to do you know mind your thoughts things like that so I grew up very very aware of spirituality and very much engrossed in spirituality without me even realizing that it was spirituality for us it was just like the way we grew up just the same way some people grew up going to church on a regular basis and learning about jesus on a regular basis and learning about the bible and hymns and all of that stuff we did that too you know um and i also was blessed to grow up around multiple different religions and a, a multitude of different religious practices so i also learned a lot of different from religions as well so I was very blessed in that way growing up um so I do understand people who want to delve into spirituality and they don't know quite where to start because a lot of people I realize now did not grow up with that sense of spirituality they did not grow up um, being told that these things existed, let alone that it's okay to practice you know a lot of people are not aware of ancestor veneration <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I told y'all I'm getting over the flu. Let me drink a little water. Okay, thank you. But um, a lot of people are, didn't grow up aware of ancestor veneration. A lot of people didn't grow up aware of, um, you know, like how to practice that spirituality, look, different African traditions, you know, um, the dance to honor Orishas, you know, um, listening to the spirit, understanding the difference between the spirit, the mind, the physical, you know, holistic health, you know, holistic nutrition, holistic wellness. A lot of people didn't, weren't raised with that foundation. So if you have questions on where you should start or what you should start with first off start with understanding that it's okay it's okay to not know never be ashamed to admit what you do not know 
Never be ashamed to admit what you do not know. I find that in the world of spirituality, right? A lot of people, everybody want to act like they know everything and nobody knows everything, right? So everybody loves to act like, oh, they're the all knowing or they're the Oracle. I was talking to a group of sisters one time and the sister, one sister was like, well, I'm an Oracle. And you know, as somebody who been in the game for a while, I'm like, sis, you don't even have the right to say nothing like that. I would, I don't even, I, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? It, it, nobody, no, nobody knows all things. The more that you admit you don't know, the more that you will learn. I will be the first to tell you, I know a lot and I know nothing at all. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always open. You got to remain open at all times. So step one is to just admit what you don't know. Step two is ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions of people who you know have been on a journey for a while. Elders, people who you know have been in the game for a minute. When I say been in the game for a minute, I'm talking about in the game of actually learning, understanding, and practicing spirituality. Some people just skip straight from learning to being a teacher. You got to spend a lot of time of continued practice. So really, really like ask questions of those who you know have been learning, analyzing, assessing, understanding, practicing for a while, some years, some years, some long, hard, long, long years of practicing spirituality and growing within their practice. You don't want nobody that's just been in the same spot for a while. Just been practicing, growing, growing, growing. Find somebody that's been growing in their practice for years and then who are in a position that they can teach you. So ask questions from a valuable quality teacher. You know, know what you don't know. Ask questions from a teacher. And then number three, really like take the time to study. Study for yourself. What do you want to know? That's the question you got to ask. African spirituality or the term spirituality in general is a broad term. Now, for a lot of black people, they want to go to African spirituality, which is still a huge term because African spirituality is really the foundation of all spirituality. No matter whether you want to go to Tantaria, you want to go to Yoruba, you want to practice uh, Kanduble, you want to, no matter what you want to do, there's always voodoo, voodoo. It's, no matter what you want to do, there's always some African foundation to it. You know, African spirituality is a huge term. So what do you want to know about African spirituality? Study everything. Study everything. Don't practice everything, but study everything so that you can really know what you're practicing. So this is before you start practicing anything, you need to spend a long time in deep study. Deep study. And you spend a long time in deep study by asking those questions, assessing what you don't know first, then asking those questions, and then really like learning and understanding from teachers learn understand from teachers who have been practicing for a long time and then you go and you study on your own and this is before you move into a state of practice study on your own study because no man knows all things so you don't want to just be turning to teachers you don't want to just turn to elders you don't want to just turn to other beings go within them books for yourself Go with behind those doors for yourself. Go to them cemeteries yourself. Really listen to the ancestors. Set up your altar. Get down on your knees and pray. Go meditate. Go listen to spirit and see what spirit is telling you what you should do and how you should move. You know, really, really study for yourself. And that's how you can really start your journey of spirituality. You know, and that's, that's really the best advice I could give for those who want to start spirituality. The benefit of my spiritual journey for me has been great. You know, it's really a foundation of who I truly am and a foundation of how I move, the foundation of my conscious and unconscious mind. You know, um, I, because I grew up with it, it's, it's just genuinely a part of who I am. I've always set up little altars every place I've ever moved to, everywhere I go. My, it don't feel like a home for me if I don't have my altars set up. You know, it's always just been there. Set up your altars. Worship your ancestors. And when I say worship, please understand, I'm not saying that your ancestors are God. What I am saying is that your ancestors are guides. There's a difference. 
Your ancestors are guides. They are the ones who protect you. They are the ones who whisper in your ear and let you know, it's okay, baby, I got you. It's okay, baby. Make sure you pay attention to this person. Make sure you watch that thing. Be careful of this. You know, your ancestors are the ones who got that, that hand over you, making sure that you are right on a regular, every moment-to-moment -moment basis, you know? So really, when I say worship them, you coming in gratitude and thanking them for being present and thanking them for being there, you know? Um, but set up those altars in your house, you know, put that cup of water. You can start your altar with a candle, have a picture of some of your ancestors, put out a flower, a fresh piece of fruit or something, you know, and a glass of clean water spring water pour a little bit of water in a clear glass and you can put that on your altar and that could how, how you can start up your ancestor altar and then just come in gratitude write little gratitude notes say ancestors and thank them for everything they've done for you you know and that's where you could start at with that but if you have any other questions let me know i'll definitely do a follow-up video for y'all about spirituality but that's how my spiritual journey started from a youth them you know um and this is where i am now i, I still practice heavy i still study heavy study very heavy um i'm in deep study right now um i still consult my elders i got my big sister queens i got you know a team around me that i consult and i listen to and i ask questions to you know and i go to when i need advice that i i don't know where to turn to any other place i go to my elders and you know it sometimes they'll tell me you need to go to your ancestors sometimes they'll tell me you need to go to orisha sometimes they'll tell me you know you need to just sit your ass down and wait you know <laughs> and i need to hear that sometimes you know so really just like follow your spirit you know and just just listen and be patient be patient on this journey understand that everybody does that's my heat that just cut on sorry y'all if that's real loud but it's cold in here <laughs> but be patient understand that you know a lot of I, a lot of people go on this journey and they either want to profit from it i'm noticing that's a big trend everybody want to start a spiritual business something dealing in holistic health be careful Okay, be very careful. Everybody's selling crystals and stones and jewelry and all that other stuff. Now, be careful. Be very careful. That's number one. So be careful and be patient. Don't just get into it just to profit from it. And number two, don't just get into it because it sounds cool to have a spiritual gift. Everybody is not meant to have certain spiritual gifts. Everybody has a spiritual gift. And you'll discover yours on your journey. But everybody ain't meant to be a reader or a seer or clairvoyant. You know, everybody ain't meant to have that those particular gifts. Figure out what your gift is. Everybody ain't an empath. Everybody has empathy. But everybody it, it, it wants to be an empath now. That's something I'm noticing. That's like a, a, a trend thing now. I'm seeing like memes and all that other stuff about empath this and empath that. Be patient. You'll figure out what your spiritual gift is. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with God. Be patient with your ancestors. They'll reveal it unto you. But first, be honest about what you don't know. Ask those questions to teachers who have been in practice for a long time. And then study for yourself. Then as you go into practice, all things you need to know will begin being revealed to you. It'll be revealed to you. Put those questions out in the universe. You'll get signs. You'll get omens. It'll be revealed to you. Just be patient. I promise your answers are coming. Peace and light, y'all. Peace and light. Peace and light. I wish you wellness. I wish you love. I wish you prosperity. I wish you healing. Much peace.